Hey, welcome friends to another video. So today this video is for those that are new to reloading and those who may be considering it. Maybe you're not really sure yet if this is something you want to get involved in. And I'm going to be covering a subject that isn't covered in enough detail. And I'm going to be as comprehensive as I can be because this is actually very important and is the basis of reloading and how to do it safely. And reloading, it's not difficult, but there are rules you have to follow to stay safe, just like there are rules to handling a firearm. It's one of those things where a little information can actually be dangerous and what you don't know really can hurt you. So let me bring up those images you saw in the thumbnail and let's talk about what this is all about. These images you see are examples of what's called the catastrophic failure, which is when your gun actually blows up. And this can happen for several reasons. It could be because the information you, you use is wrong, or maybe it's correct but incomplete, or maybe you just don't pay attention to what you're doing. These things can not only lead to damage of a firearm, but you could hurt yourself or worse. In fact, I have a story here that will make my point, so give me a moment to read it to you. A first-time reloader loaded some ammunition for a lever gun. A powder of the incorrect quickness was used in a quantity that amounted to a double charge. When he fired the first round, the gun exploded. A part of the gun penetrated the chest of a young spectator, resulting in his death. The shooter was physically uninjured, but certainly mentally scarred for life. Don't take a chance. While accidents are rare, they're usually avoidable. So this new reloader used the wrong type and amount of powder. And you know, the combinations of powder and primers and bullets have, have been tested by powder and bullet manufacturers over decades. And this accident could have been avoided if this new reloader followed the rules of reloading and paid attention to what he was doing. And by the way, the story I just read to you is from this book here, which is a reloading manual. So to help us to avoid an accident, we're going to take a look at what the bullet, powder, and reloading manufacturers instruct us to do in these manuals. Reloading manuals have information that has been tested for decades, and it's important that we know how to use it correctly. It's also important that we understand what sources of information we should avoid. We're going to get into some detail about this subject, and because of that, I'm going to create two videos. And as I mentioned, both of these videos will assume that you're new to the idea of reloading. So in this video, we're going to first take a look at what types of information are in these manuals. And what you'll notice if you go online and look at these manuals online is you'll get a product description of these manuals. But the product descriptions are all pretty much basically the same. It really doesn't help us when it comes to deciding on what manual to start with. I mean, what makes these manuals different from each other? And that's a question I had when I started it, and it's a question that new reloaders still ask. So we'll discuss how you should go about selecting the right manual for you as a new reloader. And the answer isn't the same for everyone. And then in the second video, I'll go into detail about reloading data and questions that new reloaders have about it. So let's get started. Okay, so the first question that you're probably asking yourself is, do I have to buy a reloading manual? Can I just find all this information out on the internet? And you really shouldn't do that. And I'll go over the reasons why. The first is that you don't know what information is safe to use. And most of the information on the internet can be misleading or, as I said earlier, incomplete or just not safe to use. And I'll, I'll give you an example. An example I see all the time. I'll see guys online that will say the new reloading but they just wanted to ask what reloading data to use. Instead of the other guys in the forum uh, telling this new reloader to go check your manual about that, they start to give him the pattern and bullet combinations they use. And, and this is how you end up in trouble. And, and one of the reasons is what's safe to use in their gun may not be safe to use in yours. And this is something that doesn't even cross the minds of those that are new to reloading in general. Um, the second problem is if you're really new to this, how do you do a Google search about reloading if you don't even know what questions or all the questions you should ask? There are going to be circumstances and situations that simply won't even cross your mind. And you won't know something is wrong until something goes wrong. 
And it's like that story I read to you earlier. That guy thought his reloads were safe. He didn't find out that they weren't until it was too late. So don't take a chance. If you tried to just gather all the information you can from websites and forums and videos, there are going to be gaps in that information. And you won't even be aware that those gaps exist. But a good reloading manual will show you what you need to know and do step by step. So the gaps of information that you have by trying to gather all the information off the internet won't be an issue when you use a manual. Are there trustworthy sources on the internet? Yes, and we'll get into what those are later, but those sources are really a supplement to reloading manuals. And it's, that's especially true if you're new to all of this. So let's talk about what types of information you'll find in these manuals. Okay, so as someone that's new to reloading, you're going to want a manual that has two types of information in it. The first type of information is load data, which is in every reloading manual. The second type of information that you'll want is not in all manuals, and that's information about how to reload. I also mentioned this earlier, you know, that professionals write these manuals. And this information is intended to help keep us safe if we follow their procedures and advice. So with that said, you'll find that all reloading manuals will state that you use the information in them at your own risk. And the reason they say this is, in the end, it's up to us to use the information responsibly and as intended, which is why you have to become familiar with the procedures to reload. You have to check yourself throughout the reloading process and stay focused on what you're doing. And again, whatever you do, don't use load data or any reloading information that you may find online unless you verify it with what's in your reloading manual. My advice would be if you find information online and you can't find that information in your manual, then don't use that information. Always trust the manual first. So let's take a look at some manuals in a bit more detail and see how they're different from one another. And then we'll talk about how to select the one that's right for you. And remember, what we're trying to do is we're trying to find manuals that teach us how to reload and have the load data that we need. So here are four manuals that I have. And the first one is published by a powder manufacturer, Hodgton. And they publish this once a year. And this is um, a good manual for a supplement to your main reloading manual. It has reloading data for rifle, for pistol, and even for shot shell. But this is laid out more like a magazine. So it's going to have different articles. For instance, this one has hand loading for the new 7mm PRC. It's going to have advertisements. Advertisements for new toys. So this is good for that as a supplement, but it doesn't have information about how to reload. So we're going to put this one aside for now. This next manual is an example of a specialized manual. And what you're going to come across is there are a number of manuals that are specific. They might be for a specific caliber, or in this case, a specific part of the hobby. Like this is for cast bullets. So if you want to learn how to cast your own bullets, this, by the way, is a great manual. And it will teach you how to do that step by step. It's going to have information about um, cast bullets for rifle and for pistol in here. It's going to have reloading information based on the various molds that are available. It will actually give you the product number of the mold that will make that bullet. And then this is the reloading data for that bullet. But this doesn't have information about full metal jacket bullets or plated bullets. And it doesn't teach us how to reload. So even though this is a great manual for cast bullets, or learning how to cast your own bullets, it's not a good manual for us to start with as new reloaders. So we're going to put this aside. Most reloaders will have one or both of these manuals. They both have chapters about how to reload. And the most noticeable difference between these manuals is the presentation of the information and the amount and type of load data that they have. So let's take a look at the Lyman manual first. The Lyman manual uses color pictures. And there seems to be more white space between paragraphs, which kind of makes it easier on the eyes to read. 
you notice that the illustrations of the cartridges are large. And this manual has little data for a full metal jacket, jacketed hollow point, and some lead bullets that use molds, kind of like what I showed you in the Lyman Kest handbook. But this doesn't have reloading data for plated bullets or lead bullets that you can like purchase retail. Let's compare this to the Lee manual. And you notice that the Lee manual uses black and white pictures, so it doesn't have any color pictures in it. There's not as much white space between paragraphs. If we go to the load data section, the illustrations for the cartridges are a bit smaller. This manual has low data for full metal jacket, jacket and hollow point, plated bullets, and lead bullets that don't use molds. So it has bullets of every type you can think of, and it has more load data than the Lyman manual. These two manuals I would classify as having general reloading data. And what I mean is that they'll have load data for bullets and powder that's manufactured by different companies. However, that isn't the case when it comes to manuals that are brand specific. Companies like Hornady, Spear, Berger, and others are ammunition and bullet manufacturers. You're only going to find load data that uses the bullets they manufacture. To have load data using their competitors' bullets in their manuals wouldn't make a lot of sense. Just like it wouldn't make sense if Lee Precision talked about Lyman's reloading equipment in their manual and vice versa. The same is true if you look at a powder manufacturer. Hodgton will have low data using various bullets from different companies, but you're not going to see them recommend powders that they don't manufacture. So you may be asking then, why even use a brand specific reloading manual if it's only going to have low data for those specific bullets? And there are really two reasons for that. If you're a fan of a specific brand of ammunition, and let's use Hornady as an example. If you're using Hornady ammunition and it works well on your firearm, it just seems natural to want to use Hornady bullets for your reloads when you start to reload. So go and look into their manual. The same can be said if you're a fan of Spear or Nosler or others. The other point of using a brand specific manual is those manuals will offer you load data for most, if not all, of the bullets they make. And that's something you won't find in the general manuals, like the Lyman manual or the Lee manual. It would be impossible for them to include all the load data for every bullet from every manufacturer. So it's really a personal choice as to which direction you want to go in. And that's why I mentioned earlier that the first reloading manual that you purchase isn't going to be the same for everyone. So I hope this video was helpful to you for choosing your first manual. Remember that you want a manual that teaches you how to reload and you have a choice between buying a general reloading manual or a brand specific manual and that's a personal choice. Don't use information from the internet as your only source of information about reloading. A good rule of thumb to follow is confirm everything in your manual and if it's not there then don't use it. And I did mention that there are sources of information online that are good supplements for your reloading manual, but I'll get into those in more detail in the second video about load data. I hope you found this video helpful, and if you did, please give me a thumbs up. I would really appreciate that. And as you probably know, the YouTube algorithm doesn't look too kindly upon those of us that are interested in any of the shooting sports. So please consider subscribing as well, because the more likes and subscriptions we get, the more we can share our content and your comments with others who are interested in this great hobby and pastime. Thanks for all of your support. And until next time, be safe in your reloading and safe shooting.